My name is Andrew Moore, and uh, I am grateful for being invited to speak here. So thank you, first of all, to Alex and to Olivia for inviting me to speak. Um, I'm also grateful that... Um, sorry, do you want to start speaking? You can ignore that. Okay. Um, I'm also grateful that civic tech exists. To be honest, I didn't know that this existed, and I'm so glad that it does. Um, just the brief, uh, what is civic tech that you just spoke about, Olivia, uh, is is amazing to me. The fact that there are people who are using design and technology uh, at the intersection of technology and public life, that's what, what you're saying. I think I just think that's amazing, and I'm super excited. I, I feel like I probably have way more to learn from everybody here than they do for me, but uh, let, let's move forward anyway. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, and I think I'm gonna stand up just because when I talk about playgrounds, I tend to get a little bit excited. So uh, here we go. Uh, Alex has asked me to be here to talk about, is it okay if I'm standing in front of that? Is that cool? Uh, to talk about the inspiration and the challenges and the impact of this project that I've been uh, working on for five years now called Danforth Dab. Um, so the first question is, uh, what is Danforth Dad? Well, uh, it is a website supported by uh, social media uh, channels uh, where I rate and review um, as many of Toronto's playgrounds as possible. Uh, as of now, we're up to 220 playgrounds reviewed, which sounds really impressive, except that there are probably about six or 700 of them. So it's kind of an impossible task, but that at the same time is part of what makes it fun. Um, and so to do something like this, to undertake such a big project, you would be, it would be reasonable to think that I must work in sort of the Toronto Parks Forestry Recreation or uh, web design or playground design or landscape design or something, but in fact, I do none of those things. But that's also kind of the point. Um, because the purpose tonight is to provide a bit of an example of what someone with very basic tech literacy can do um, to to get to to engage people with public space, and that's really ultimately what the goal of this all is. Um, so I'm going to start with the uh, the inspiration, the where this where this whole idea came from. Um, so in addition to not being an architect or playground designer or any of those things, I'm also not obsessed with playgrounds, uh, which might be a bit surprising. I maybe have become obsessed with playgrounds, but that isn't really what generated the idea in the first place. Uh, the Danforth Dad project kind of was born out of two uh, other loves, which may be loves if I'm gonna hazard a guess that at least some people in this room also share. Uh, the first love is a love of maps. I've been kind of obsessed, yes, lots of vigorous <laughs> nodding. I like that, very good. Um, I was the kid who was always looking through my parents' huge atlases and just totally absorbed with maps. Uh, and that, that survived into adulthood. And so when my son was born in 2015, uh, one of the first things I put in his room was a big laminated uh, map of the city. It's one of those bike trail and park maps. Uh, and the idea was that every time I would visit a park with him, not even necessarily a playground, just a park, uh, we would together, I'd put a little sticker on his on his hand and he would put it on the board. And initially the idea was just to give him an early sense of place, an early sense of you know where our house is, how far was it that we went today, which subway station did we get off at, all that sort of stuff. And I don't know how well you can see those dots there, but it grew and grew over time. And at, at a certain point, I, the question popped into my head, wouldn't it be cool if there was a Google map like this? And if you could see where all the playgrounds were close to you. And then part of my brain thought, well, there's no way you're the first person to think of that idea. So let's just let's just continue with raising children. Um, and then a little bit of time passes. And then so the second uh, love that spawned the Danforth Dad project was a love of rating things. I've always been a big fan of like top 10 lists and I'm a teacher. So I'm always assessing and developing rubrics and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and so one day I was with my son at our local playground, which is Withrow Park. Um, and another question floated into my head, which was, wouldn't it be cool if there was a rating system for playgrounds? And by rating system, I'm not talking about like the Yelp, everything can be measured in five stars sort of way. I was like, we need a bit more objectivity. We need categories. We need to make this as objective as possible. Uh, and so, I, and what I really wanted it to be uh, as I was conceiving it was um, a resource that would be useful if you had just a quick five minutes before planning an outing or if you had an hour after the kids went to bed and you really wanted to go down a rabbit hole, there would be more there for you to enjoy. Uh, so that's kind of where it came from. Um, but of course, as soon as I decided to do this, and by the way, I, I checked online, 
sure that somebody else had already done it and as it turned out nobody had so that was kind of it I was like well I've sentenced myself to this now I'm, I'm gonna be the one to do this um, but I had lots of examples to draw from there's a fantastic one for Montreal there's even one for like I think Red Deer or some really small town out west and so it exists all over the place and it was just a question of finding what would work uh, for me and so the two challenges that I knew I was going to face going into it one was temporal like when am I going to get the time to do all this it's a lot of data to collect it's a lot of writing to do I was going to enjoy it but it does take a lot of time. And the other was a technological challenge because I really wanted to make something that was user friendly and that wasn't just, you know, me doing my own thing. I wanted it to be useful for people, uh, given my limited uh, skill set. Um, so for the temporal challenge, really, I, I, I told myself that I was okay with it taking a long time. Uh, you guys are all folks who really like projects and it's always fun to have a project on the go and sometimes you feel like you just want to get it out there as quickly as possible but for me I knew it wasn't going to be like that so for the first couple of years um, it was just kind of chipping away whenever I would take my kids to a playground I'd be sure to take a few pictures uh, I would sort of make a mental note sort of develop a score in my head take some notes when I got home um, and then in 2018-19 I kind of went full on I'm fortunate enough that uh, the school where I work uh, offers four over five. So I did uh, uh, sort of 80% of my salary for four years and then took a, a year off to, to be with my kids at home. They were three and one at the time. And that was the year when I was really going to go full on into it. And anytime the kids were sleeping, I was going to be writing a review or, or building the map or, or doing whatever. Um, and so... That, that, that was how this was developed. And I also knew that I didn't want to launch it with just a few reviews here and there. I wanted it to be useful right off the bat. So I waited in a, until we'd visited 100 playgrounds and I'd done written reviews for about 50 of those before I launched in January of 2019. The technology I used was pretty basic. Uh, the, the Google map that I wanted to use, oh, I was going to open that to show you, but I'm sharing my screen in such a way that I'm not sure it'll look great for the folks online. Um, so apologies in advance. Uh, let's just see if this will work. Okay, it's loading very slowly. Okay, you can kind of see that online. So the Google map, um, you can see all those little pegs are all the parks that we've been to. And I wanted it to be so that if you just go and click on one of these, uh, you can kind of immediately see certain things about the park. So there's a, a little scorecard there. Oops. Oh, there it is. Little scorecard there. Uh, that I really wanted to look like a Hello My Name Is sticker. You can probably say echoes of that design. Um, the score broken down into categories, which I'm very happy to get into detail in the Q&A if people want to get nerdy about criteria. Uh, but I want it to be kind of an at a glance, but enough detail to be useful. And then on the uh, right hand side is kind of a list of amenities. The ones that are grayed out are the ones that are not there. The ones that are in black are the ones that are there. And then there's the, the link to the full review. So that was, that was the, uh, the Google Maps tool. Uh, to build the website, I used Wix. I don't know how true tech people feel about Wix. For my purposes, it's it's great. All right, I'm getting a thumbs up. Love it. Um, for me, it had the perfect balance of like usability and capability. So that's what I went with. And again, sorry for the folks online. It's a little bit too uh, difficult to capture this. But as well as having the map embedded there, uh, there's links to just kind of the general reviews page where there's like a tiles view of all the different parks and you click on them to, to take a look at the full reviews. Um, there's the, I really wanted to have this, which was a sort of a sortable list uh, where you could click on a park by name to see the review, but also sort it alphabetically or sort it ascending or descending by score, or even over here, uh, sort it based on whether or not it had a sandbox or a splash pad or a waiting pool um, or a bathroom, which until you're a parent, you don't realize how critical that is. Um, so I really wanted to have it kind of organized like this um, in a way that was sortable and, and easily searchable. Uh, and again, I found that Wix was, was really good uh, for that sort of thing. Um, and then the final piece of technology, uh, social media. I did use Twitter for a while and then sort of went off it uh, a few years ago when it seemed like everybody was going off it. I tried Blue Sky and that didn't really have sort of the critical mass to, to be useful. Uh, so really it's Facebook for the demographic who are grandparents taking care of their kids and Instagram for just about everybody else, including my own mother. Uh, and I'll just, I just want to show you the Instagram page very quickly because 
Uh, the interesting thing here is that although the website is purely playground based, the Instagram account has kind of become a catch all for all the other parent related things that I would recommend that other parents do. Oh, site can't be reached. Well, that's fine. Um, but just uh, I'll give you a little bit of an idea a bit later on of some of the things I do on Instagram other than simply uh, posting links to the reviews because I found that it's it's probably been the best way to uh, to communicate with users. And that's where I get all the most of my recommendations and a lot of the feedback. Um, so that is that. Uh, let's move on to the most important part, which is the impact of all this. Um, it's been, I think, far more fun and successful than I ever would have hoped. Um, the main impact, I think, for Toronto is that it's become a fairly valued resource for parents and caregivers. I've received a lot of really wonderful feedback, like I said, mostly through Instagram. Just either people saying, thanks for building this, or saying, hey, have you been to this new one? It's really great. And so it's, it's turned into a really like a two-way street because I have found out so much more that I wouldn't have if I hadn't done this. And others, of course, have uh, learned about parks from me. So that's been a wonderful, uh, wonderful impact. Um, and then for me personally, um, I could go on for kind of a long time uh, as to how doing this has made me a better teacher and a better parent. But I think what's probably most relevant for us here is how it's made me a better citizen. Because um, that's really what's Civic Tech Toronto is all about, right? Giving people the, the opportunity to be better citizens. And so, for example, these are this is the type of post that Toronto PFR does all the time on their Instagram, where they sort of invite people to click on a link and do a survey, or here's three options for this playground, which one do you prefer? And uh, I never would have done that before, or especially back when I was a kid when it was like a little poster somewhere out in the real world saying, attend this meeting where people yell at city officials. Like I never would have engaged in that, right? But now I do all the time and I've engaged my kids in it too. There was a park in our neighborhood that was being redone. And so I showed them, hey, check it out. These are the options, which one do you wanna vote for? And so again, for my kids, it's a really great way to get them habituated to, to not just using their city resources, but in some way contributing to them as well. Uh, I also, through Instagram, um, managed to get the wonderful opportunity to go visit um, a playground manufacturer just outside of Cambridge called Earthscape. They're an absolutely fantastic company. If you've ever been in back of the AGO and seen the fantastic playground there, that is an Earthscape playground. They're very uh, recognizable and very characteristic. And so they invited us, uh, my kids and I, to go. Uh, and they showed us, uh, this is the room where they kind of do all their sketches. They took us into the workshop, showed us how they treat the wood. Uh, and of course, I posted all this because it was so interesting to, to other playground fans out there. Uh, and once again, I, I always think of my kids as how they are learning that there, there are people behind these playgrounds, right? It's not just something that, that springs up out of nowhere. There are people who think about these things and design them and go through the process of, of being creative. And I think that was really valuable to them. Um, I've also used the Insta Instagram account to profile designers. Uh, a few have gotten in touch over the years if they happen to see a picture of something that they designed. Sometimes they would reach out and say, hey, I did that one in like 96 or whatever it was. Uh, and I thought that was really great. And so I would sort of put these little uh, multi-slide um, multi uh, posts together, uh, highlighting what their work is in Toronto and what their story is. And it's just, again, another interesting way of showing uh, the people who follow me uh, who the people are behind the playgrounds, which I think is really important. Um, I also uh, do equipment spotlights, especially during the summer. This is maybe getting a bit too nerdy, but um, the cool thing about highlighting a certain piece of playground equipment uh, is that I, I think, I hope, but certainly for me, it's made me more attentive and engaged when I am at a playground with my kids. I didn't really want to be the dad who's just at the playground taking pictures all the time or zoning out or, or doing sports betting on his phone. Uh, and this is one of the ways that's made me a better parent is that I, I watch how my kids interact with the playgrounds and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, we've invented games together on the playground. Um, but so, so this particular um, type of post, this equipment spotlight, I think and hope that it gets people to just sort of take a second look at something that may have kind of slipped into the background for them a bit and notice how these things are, are designed. Um, I've also been lucky enough to have a lot of opportunities that never would have come up if I hadn't undertaken this project. Uh, invitations to, uh, to consult on school playgrounds, 
Um, I connected with someone at uh, Capital Projects at the city who is, is eager to sort of chat through our experiences. And again, all things that make me feel like I am much more engaged uh, than I ever would have otherwise been if I hadn't uh, undertaken this project. Uh, and so I, I think that, I, I hope that it's done for other people, people who follow me, what it's done for me, which is to get them to, to notice their cities more, get them to engage with them a little bit more. Um, because that's ultimately been my goal. And I think what I've learned, um, I think what I've learned is that the, the, the famous sausage principle is inaccurate. We pr you've probably heard of this before. If you love something, don't find out how it's made. I prefer what I call the playground principle, which is if you find out how something is made, you're more likely to love it, or perhaps you're more likely to want to improve it. And maybe most relevantly for this crowd of people, if you want people to care about something, they have to notice it. And playgrounds and parks generally are kind of just there. And by bringing it to the foreground, people will care about them more. And I think that's really, again, for, for, the, for this crowd of people, I think that's kind of what the goal is of Civic Tech Toronto. Um, and this to me is kind of the miracle of how virtual spaces can drive engagement with public spaces. And um, at times when uh, you know, cynical people of my parents' generation complain about virtual spaces. I just point them in this direction to try to dissuade them of that thought. Um, but I mean, the, the possibilities here really uh, are, are almost endless. Uh, I, I imagine someone doing what I have done with playgrounds with something like public libraries or basketball courts or toboggan hills or, I mean, public art. There's public art all over the city. Um, we basically live in an open air art gallery. Imagine like a catalog, an interactive catalog of where all the public art is in the city. Like imagine what that could do to a tourist who doesn't have much money but wants to see, you know, some some art in Toronto. I think that would be really cool. Um, so again, I think by doing these types of things, we we give people a reason to notice and to love and to participate in their cities, and that seems to be uh, what Civic Tech Toronto is all about. So. Thank you so much for inviting me to share this with you. And I'm very happy to take uh, any questions and nerd out about whatever you want to nerd out about. Thank you.